Production numbers when at nameplate will be around 4,440 tonnes of NDPR oxide um, as a powder, um, which we will be able to export to customers globally. Uh, it's important that um, your, um, your subscribers realise that to go to an NDPR oxide differentiates you from other companies. Hello, welcome to Assay TV. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Gavin Lockyer, who is the Managing Director of Arafura Resources. Arafura are developing the Nolans project, which was one of the world's very few shovel-ready NDPR ore to oxide deposits. Gavin, great to see you uh, today. Um, start things off, the significance of Nolans. In, in the grand scheme of rare earth, um, deposits and and the those elements which are essential uh, for high strength magnets. Where does Nolan sit in 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 in, in the world? Yeah, well, uh, thanks for having me again. Uh, look, um, the NDPR or neodymium praseodymium rare earth market is uh, set to um, have an emerging gap between demand and supply by around twenty thirty. Um, and the that that gap um, quantified represents about ten Nolan's projects. So um, you know it, when in production will will represent about five percent of the world's of the world's production, which sounds small, but it's actually significant given the very few number of players that are actually going through to an, uh, a rare earth oxide, as you uh, mentioned in your highlights. Mm, absolutely, and you've just put out some sort of updated project economics. Um, tell us a little bit about some of those numbers. Yeah, look, uh, we did our feasibility study in 2019. Uh, we then provided the market with an update in May 2021. And uh, given the length of time that had gone, but also the um, uh, amount of engineering and, and design that we'd put into the project, we felt it appropriate to put out an update um, of capital um, ahead of FID, which we're now targeting in the first part of next year. So, um, like uh, like most um, entities throughout the world, we've um, you know engaged encountered supply chain issues. Um, we've encountered uh, inflationary cost issues and 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 so our capex and opex numbers have increased but what's really pleasing about these economics that we've published uh, last week is that um you know the revised economics show that it's still a world class asset still has very strong mpv and irrs returns so um you know it's uh, all systems go as far as we're concerned mm. i mean can we you know go into some of the details of these numbers i mean in terms of sort of uh... Uh, production numbers what what are you looking to produce per year and and for how long right so um production numbers when at nameplate will be around 4440 tons of ndpr oxide um, as a powder um, which we will be able to export to customers globally uh, it's important that um your um your subscribers realize that to go to an ndpr oxide differentiates you from other companies which or other project developers which are merely producing a rare earth uh, mixed rare earth product or a or a, co or a mineral concentrate because those products will have to go to China for downstream processing. By going to a, a rare earth oxide, we actually enable a diversified supply chain outside of outside of the China regular Chinese processing routes. We'll also produce about 140,000 tonnes per annum of uh, P205 or phosphoric acid, which we can sell into the fertiliser market. Our ore body is hosted in a phosphate um, ore, and uh, so we recover that as uh, as part of our, um, I guess, uh, operating cost credit um, reduction scheme. So uh, we produce phosphate, and we produce uh, the NDPR, and a small amount of heavy rare earths too. Absolutely. And, and what sort of uh, IR and MPV does that generate? So on a, on a base case scenario, utilising around 130 US dollars per kilogram for NDPR uh, gives us an IRR of about 19.3% uh, and an MPV of 2.4 billion Australian dollars. So uh, pretty, uh, pretty reasonable size project. Mm. And have you done any sort of um, sensit sensitivity analysis on sort of you know, potential upside case? Yeah, look, some of the longer term forecasts are using a much, much higher NDPR price. Um, if we take a sort of a, a um, considered upside case utilising US $190 per kilogram of N NDPR, we end up with um, a 4.2 billion Australian uh, MPV and an IRR of around 24%.
most analysts are forecasting NDPR prices to to uh, escalate significantly between now and 2030. Mm. And what what what's uh, causing their optimism? Well, basically, it's the um, the the push towards renewable energy and net zero by 2050. Um, by 2035, 50, about 55 percent of all NDPR magnets will be either used in um, electric uh, drive trains for electric vehicles, or will be used in offshore wind turbines. Uh, which is a, a fairly significant portion of the market. Definitely, definitely. Um, now, you've recently, at the beginning of this month, you signed a binding offtake agreement with Hyundai in uh, of South Korea. Uh, tell us some of the details. Look, this was a, a groundbreaking uh, achievement for our team that have been working tirelessly for a number of years in in trying to attract the end user or the automaker in this particular instance. So the uh, the transaction is for NDPR oxide, or we have a, a relationship with a metal converter, so we can deliver metal as well if that's what the customer would like. It's initially for seven year term. Uh, and by mutual agreement, we can extend it for a further five years. So that lines up nicely with our, our potential debt structuring. The um, agreement has a number of, um, uh, of uh, pricing mechanisms inside it, um, which protect us and also protects uh, Hyundai Kia. Um, and um, I guess more importantly, or just as importantly, uh, it represents about 40% of our total. We're, we're targeting 85% of our future offtake uh, as um, binding contracts to meet our debt requirements. Uh, and this represents about 40% of that 85%. So a significant chunk is now done. The other pleasing thing around the, the contract is that when we first started negotiating negotiating this with um, with the uh, with the Hyundai, uh, it, it started out at 500 tonnes. Uh, then it went to uh, 1,000 tonnes when we announced the heads of agreement earlier this year. And then over time, as we were negotiating the final contract, they wanted to increase the tonnages to 1,500 tonnes. So I think that shows uh, a big reflection of to the quality of the of the Nolans project. Mm. But you're going for a sort of diversification uh, within your offtake agreements, aren't you? You want multiple sort of options, yeah? Yeah, look, we've closely tried to link our offtake with uh, those jurisdictions in which NDPR is strategic. So obviously those jurisdictions where they have a strong automobile industry or a strong uh, renewable energy um, industry. Um, similarly, where those industries are strategic, you typically will have government uh, backed funding through export credit agencies. Um, which we can tap into using these long-term offtake agreements. So we'll be working with the, the Korean uh, government agency in Kayshore to look to secure a government guarantee against that offtake agreement, which we can then go and apply to um, commercial lenders um, and, 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 and get what we call covered debt. So their debt is basically guaranteed by the Korean government. So that's part of our overall funding structure. Hmm. And talking about the sort of project financing, what's the progress towards securing that? Look, earlier this year, we've appointed uh, Society General and National Australia Bank as our mandated leader rangers. Uh, they are mandated with uh, bringing together the entire financing package. Uh, we're also, uh, as I said, working with uh, groups like Kayshaw. We'll be working with um, other European ECAs as we secure more binding offtakes from those regions. And we also have the Australian government supporting us through Export Finance Australia and the Northern Australian Infrastructure Fund. So that's to the tune of about 300 million Australian dollars for a 15 year tenor, um, subject to a number of conditions precedent. But um, that's all coming together from the debt side. We'd like to get the debt package all um, lined up and, and ready to go, which we think, which will give us a bit of a re-rating so that we can then go out and raise the equity that we need um, to uh, to build the build the project. Mm. I mean, a lot of work going there on the sort of financing and offtakes and things like that. But what, what's happening on site at the moment? Not a lot out at site, but uh, in an ideal world, uh, we'd really love to be able to start doing some on-country activity uh, first part of next year. We've got plans ahead to um, start commencement of uh, building roads, uh, constructing the ball field and uh, and uh, early earthworks to prepare for the uh, camp and village construction. So, uh, you know, things are really happening. We're really excited. Mm. And in terms of sort of timelines for sort of uh, starting the procurement process and starting construction, uh, what what are you looking at for that? 
Look, uh, you know, again, in an ideal world, if we had funds, we'd actually probably start uh, securing long lead items now for procurement. Uh, they they are on uh, on they putting pressure on schedule, um, so we would dearly love to be able to uh, start placing those um, those orders. But um, we're now targeting FID by March next year, so we may do that. May start ordering before FID, but um, we'll see how we go. Um, construction uh, in its earnest, uh, ideally by the middle of next year, uh, we'd have major activity happening. Excellent. Well, you've got a very busy uh, few months ahead of you. It sounds like uh, it's all proceeding very nicely. Uh, but thank you very much uh, for joining us today. And please do come back and tell us all about it as things progress. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Gavin.